welcome back. This is Angie and we're here to work on page, is it eight? Wow, that's great. Eight is great. So I have been busy this week. Um, I had a week of very long week of migraines. Um, so it has kind of kept me out of the studio for several days. And then today, all I wanted was to be in here because I finally have been headache free now for the last 14 hours or so. Um, and I've wanted to be in here all day, but the weatherman said that here in Oregon we are on about our last day of good weather. And therefore, we had some cleaning up to do. So, uh, cut fingers, scrapes, scratches, all from pruning and getting our yard ready for the winter. Um, and for our wonderfully rainy season. But I'm finally back and I have come up with a little better, whoops, excuse me, a little better idea for our page eight and our band. Um, I did have a chance to make a few different, different ones and um, decided this one would be better. I also discovered that I had these in my uh, drawer of goodies and this is a snap that goes on a purse. This is what it looks like. Oh, my dog's coming. This is what it looks like. It actually goes on a purse. And I think with this being a belly band, a wobbly belly band with a load of photos on it for our waterfall that perhaps we will give this a try as our closure. Now um, you can get these at Joann's. I have I just picked one up the other day at Michael's. They had um, these Let's see if I can show you the name. Pure Snap Loop and Threads. So that was at Michael's and they look like this. So they are easy, pretty easy to find. Originally I got these at Joann's, but that was many years ago when I was making purses. So, um, Anyway, um, I would really like to try this because I have not tried it on an album yet and I think it might work well. The other thing I did the last couple of days um, is, you know, headache or not, I, I did come in here and do some cleaning, um, some reorganizing and stuff. And so I have this new glass mat. I hope there's no reflection. Um, the one thing I love about it right now is that it gives me a guide of where I'm at under the camera. So I'm hoping it will help me to stay in your view a little bit better. And um, But I did do some reorganizing. I moved some books out of here and used those shelves for my overabundance of paper products. Um, and so far it's, it looks good. I have a few empty shelves, but I know in no time at all they will be full. So let's get started on page eight. This is going to be our waterfall page. Let me grab the album and let's look at the page eight that I originally did. And you can see here that I um, I use this um, ribbon, which is this ribbon here. But I notice that it easily comes apart. 
and I'm a little concerned about that with the waterfall and closing and opening and that it would um, not be <coughs> the excuse me the best hinge attachment even though I have double magnets in here so I've made the new band wider we'll still apply um, some ribbon on it or some burlap or something or lace I don't know let's just go with the flow and see what we come up with the other thing I notice is because the belly band, belly band is heavy um, things slide out of it quite easy maybe if it were in this way so we might come up with something different to put under our belly band um, I don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes so anyway our waterfall has one two three four five six seven eight nine nine sections so let's get started you will need your base page and you will need to cut a 12 inch strip at one and a half inches wide that's this one let me find a paper to put under it so you can actually see it here we go and you're going to need on that 12 inch paper you're going to cut one at seven inches long or you're going to cut one and a half inch wide by 12 on that one and a half inch by 12 you're going to cut it at seven and at four and a half then you're going to score these two pieces each piece I already attached this one you're going to score them at a half inch and at three quarter inch half inch and three quarter inch then after you do that if you would like you can apply your um, I can't hardly see it there a little bit that is the the um, book cloth that I have used on another hinge in this book um, and we're also going to use it on the um, the spine and we used it on the cover we will use it on the cover um, I just cut it at let's see uh, just about one inch wide or long by uh, about three-eighths of an inch wide by about one inch three-eighths inch by one inch then I applied glue and carefully pushed it down and then carefully refolded my score lines that will give us a fourth of an inch here to um, for our, our waterfall hinge that way when it's full of pictures it won't be bulgy like this hopefully it will hold them nice and firmly so you need to cut those now I have applied this one I found my center of my book and I drew a line up here and down here and then I found the center of the belly band of the hinge and I drew a line oh, where is my camera there it is and I drew a line on it so I could match that up with my line right here I'm going to turn this towards me so I can see it a little better and I'm going to apply glue just on this piece right here 
shake up my glue. I did get my new pins in the mail. I applied the tag on this one. So my glitter glue bottles are uh, properly sealed now. Let's see, I need a cloth. Okay, now line this up on that line. And at the base here, carefully line it up so it's even with the end of the book here. And before it dries all the way, make sure these are going to match up. The four and a half inch goes at the top. It looks like I have to move it over just slightly. Okay, I think I have it. And press that down good. Okay, now we have two flaps. Let's go ahead and cut a piece of paper to fit this band, both pieces. So it was cut at one and a half inch. So this time, let's cut it just a little bit smaller so it will fit. Let's see, what paper do I want? That's our extras. Let me put it over here. Let me see what I have in our extra paper one. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay, so I have some solid blue. Let's see what else I have in here. I have a nice chunk of solid and I have a nice chunk of this, but it's not long enough for the bottom. So I need something longer than that one. Oh, well, here's this one. Let's see. Let me put this paper under here so you can see what I'm doing. Yes, this will work great. Now this doesn't give us the kind of rusty looking hinge that I originally wanted to create. But I think what's most important is, is that we make a hinge that will sustain a lot of use. So I would rather teach you how to do that and how to change course than to get the rusty hinge on there. So let me cut this one. And we might as well cut this one. Let's see. Just inside. We'll cut it right here. So we'll cut two long lengths and then I'll cut that one. I had to make sure I had my <laughs> microphone on. Okay, I'll cut that one right there. And lining this up for one, just less than one inch. Or, sorry, just less than one and a half inches. Okay, there's that one. one for that one? Yes. Okay, this is, need our numbers going the correct direction. 
And I would like to line this up on this side and I'm going to use that uh, stub punch on that and cut it. Then I'm going to scoot this over here to this side and use that punch again. Oh look, I fixed it. I didn't have to have my hubby fix it. I did it myself. Yay me! So that one is ready to be glued on. Looks like I'm going to need to trim it just slightly. Let's see. No, it's going to be just fine. Yay! Before we glue that on, um, we will need to put our hinge stuff in it. So let's not do that yet. Let's safely put that one over there. And let's figure out where this one goes. So just a little bit of extra space around it. Let me cut that one off. Where, where did the line go? Where, where can it be? There it is. Yay! We have it. Okay. Looks like it's going to be perfect. So let's use our stub punch on this one as well. Make sure your numbers are going the correct direction so they're not upside down. Whoops. I'm going to have to turn this just slightly. And I'll turn it a little bit more. Whoops. Oops. It's all falling apart on me. Probably should have done this before I put the before I tried to cut these out. Okay. Let's use our distressing ink. And we are going to ink those up. Let's see. Oh, there's my <laughs> These were stuck to my ruler. I could not find them anywhere. <laughs> oh dear. Gosh, we watched a really creepy show today. Or it was just a little while ago, in fact. Uh, you probably, you guys have probably already seen it if you watch creepy shows, but we watched uh, California, spelled with a K. Wow, had um, Brad Pitt in it. and Not the roles, not the role I would normally see him in. Anyway. It was a very creepy show. But I'm glad it's over. <laughs> I, hope, I hope it doesn't give me bad dreams. Okay, now we need to apply our snaps. And let's see. If we put the bigger one on the top. Oh. oh, gosh, those are powerful. <laughs> Maybe we're not going to use them. Maybe it's just my hurt finger. Let's see, it kind of seems like maybe 
That should be on the bottom, doesn't it? But this is scrapbooking. We can do anything we want, right? Okay. So we're going to put that one on the bottom. And this one is going to go under here. I guess it doesn't really matter. Let's see what it feels like under there. Hmm. The heavier one on the top flap will help hold it down. Okay. So, before we apply it, we need to cut our piece for here. I can see that already. And this one is the same way. We have to apply our, because these are different kinds of magnets, first we have to apply the this piece on this top one. And on the, on the top flap, we have to apply the underside piece first. Then we'll attach the magnets and then we'll cover the magnet with paper. Okay. That way the magnet will be held through two pieces of paper. These are like brad magnets, so they're pretty, pretty strong there. So let's go ahead and apply the lower bracket piece. Let me put this under here for you. And we need to go that way. Oh. Already got a glue stop up. And of course, it's towards evening, so my eyesight's tired from the whole day. And I don't want to stab myself with the pen. Okay. Apply that one down. Start here at the top. So we get our spacing really nicely. Okay. going to put this one on the base and let's run the brads from the top to the bottom north to south instead of east to west let's go north to south and um, I think to get those on there I'm going to try pressing that into the ink and then pressing it on here. And there we go, if that's about center. This is where my two holes are. That worked very well, pressing that into the ink, the little brads, so I could see where they go. I'm gonna flip my book over, and I'm going to get my cutting tool over here. I want to move these magnets away from my um, oh whatever you call it over there. My tablet. Okay. Cutting just a little slit. 
We'll just have to kind of see how it goes. Whoops. New cutting mat. Let's see if it went through. Not quite. There we go. And there we are. Look at that. Okay, let's flip this back over. And let's... Oh, I didn't think about how tough these would be. Let's see. Do I have a jewelry tool here? Okay, I am going to put part of that on the jewelry tool. I mean, <laughs> on the brad top, on the purse top. Hmm. Okay, let's go this way. And press it down. There's one. If it feels too tight, just pull it back up a little bit. And let's go this way again. Nope, can't do that. Just gently press it down. Yay, there's one. Okay. Now. That's ready for a bottom on it, isn't it? You know, I do want to um, cover that, though. It's not going to come out, but I don't want these to rip any further. So I am going to cover this. Not up that far. And then I'm going to put one on this side as well. Um, I'm going to have to lift that up a little bit. And then reapply it. There we go. That'll make it smoother on the paper we put place down on it. Put your tape cover back over it so it doesn't stick to anything. There we go. Okay. Now we apply this piece under here. But first we need a piece of paper. Let's see. This one is just about wide enough. I mean, just just about the right size. <laughs> it's uh, more than wide enough. I'm just going to trace around it. And cut the other piece out. Not with those. Not with that. How about we use these? This will work great. Just to the inside of that line. Otherwise it will not be the right size at all. Doesn't look perfect, but we don't need perfect. We just need last, last ability. So, oh my gosh, I'm tired today after working in the yard. I haven't worked that hard in a long time. All I want anymore is to be in my craft room, so it was kind of tough for me to leave here and go there. 
but once I get out in the yard and start working I love it okay we're going to apply this remember do not go over your hinge here we want that to continue to work properly Starting at the top part of it, kind of lining things up good, and tr trying to get them as even as possible. I did cut that a little wonky there, so it's letting me know it's it's wonky. I'm finding it difficult to work with this crazy band-aid on my finger. Going to pull that up and I'm going to reapply it. This will be fine. Once it's glued down it'll be just the same as always. But I'm going to have to do it this way. Get that glue off my finger there. I should have turned this piece over. Maybe it's just not cut right. Okay. There we go. I really should have turned this piece over because when I traced it, I actually ended up tracing this cut is really on that side. So I should have flipped that piece over. All these things we have to remember while crafting. Oh my goodness. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to apply some ink to this rim. And then I'm going to make sure that it's got its one fourth inch there. And I'm going to make sure this one has its one fourth inch. I'm going to try and line these up really well. And I'm going to give that, I hope, yes, there we go. So now we know that this has to go inside of that. So then we'll put some ink on its little feeties and we'll center it on that circle. Excuse my head while I look over this. I think it's going to be right about there. And cut your slit in there. Now I'm cutting this just slightly wider. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I have room to maneuver it around a little bit in case it's not evened up. So before I attach these flat, we're going to make sure it's lined up. So far so good. Okay, let's have a look. Looks good. What do you think? Wonky? Maybe a little bit. 
it does twist and turn. However, it's in there pretty solid. And that, I wonder if that's going to be a problem. <sighs> that might be a problem might be too strong of a magnet. It will definitely prevent any purse snatchers from getting into it. I have to think. What it needs is a way to pull it up right here where the magnet is. Now I can put something on there that would do that. But would it fit in the album? Or would it be too tall? It's going to need something to pull it open. Maybe just a ribbon tab on it. Maybe that's where this ribbon's going to come in. Maybe we'll make a tab here. That would give us something to pull up on other than the tab itself. Would have to attach it under it, I think. And then under it on this side. So let me pull that out. And I think maybe If we round it off a little bit here. Let's try that. Or maybe it would be better there. No, it won't work. Bear with me. Okay, I think if we do something like this, and we'll put our brad through there. Let's cut that off. Let's put a little bit of glue on it. And let's bend it over. How far over is the question? I think maybe right about there. We'll kind of glue that down. I should be using, well, Art glitter glue is supposed to be a fabric glue as well, so I'm going to try it. It says on it, fabric. Premium quality glue. Well, this one doesn't say fabric. Let's see. I don't know. I thought I had one of them that said good for fabric.
I want to, well, not good for fabric. I do have one that is, but I think what we're going to do is just apply this in there. That's not working either now. My goodness sake. What did I do with my tools? I don't know what I did with my little pokey tool. Oh, there it is. does not want to stick to the glue, that's for sure. Okay. Now. Okay, let's peel that off there. We still have some we can put back there. Okay, that is not drying today. Let me get some other glue. This is Fabri-Tac. The street is if you want your fabric tack to not explode backwards on you that you poke some holes in your paper here and then you don't have to always put the lid back and forth on it I cut just a little slit there and I'm gonna cut a second hole is kind of an air hole. Okay. I'm going to peel that tape off there. So that did not work. So don't use tape after you use your art glitter glue. Boy, it gets stringy. Kind of like, um, this is the first time I've ever used this kind of glue. It gets stringy like uh, your glue gun. I hope this glass isn't causing a reflective appearance for you. Put 
that on there. Now, we are going to walk it around to the side. We're going to peel that off. And we want a tab about that far. So we're going to cut it right about here. Let's get that out of our way. And once again, we're going to fold this little piece over. And glue that down. I'm, I'm remembering to turn this over upside down on my stuff here. I know this is, feels a little bit confusing right now, but you'll see what I'm doing here in just a little bit. Oh my gosh! This doesn't even want to be glued together. Maybe there's some sort of a starch in this fabric that um, isn't allowing it to stick together very well. Good heavens, I'm disappointed all the way around. Okay. Well, I'm going to glue it underneath the fabric there, and then I'll put a false top on it. Sorry. Crazy things here that we're trying to think about. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to pull that up. I'm going to cut through my fabric over there. Do not cut your fingers. Okay, let's see here. Press that down good. Even it up here. So it makes a nice pull tab. And finally, bend these down. Let's 
kind of a hard one there. thing we could do is to glue a extra piece of paper in there so that it doesn't quite tug so hard. But let's go ahead and glue the top on here and see how that comes out. Well, let's see need um, another piece of oh it's this one isn't it no did I use it on the bottom no here it is Whew. scared myself I know I heard you. Tape, Angela. You didn't use the tape. That just kind of protects that, doesn't it? But I can be honest with you. I'm not sure I like this idea. <laughs> I wanted to try it. But now that I've tried it, I'm not sure that it's it's really going to work very well. But I'm going to finish putting it on and let it all dry. And then I'm going to give you a score on 1 to 10 on it. So we can actually know if it's a good idea or a bad idea. Okay. So it is under there. That might be a bad idea. It's when it latches completely. There. Now you can see the other thing that it does is it leaves quite a gap there. You see that? So for that reason I don't like it very well. Um, but we're going to use it because it's on there. <laughs> okay. Now we need a piece back here, don't we? Okay, this one. Too short. Yes, way too short. Oh, let's see, what do we have here? Oh goodness, I think they're all going to be too short. Let's try this one. There we go. That'll work. Pencil. Draw our line. And draw our width. Mm 
Let me double check our widths. There we go. Okay. Here we go. Let's cut the length first. And we'll cut the width part. that'll work. Well, I better cut just a slight little bit off the bottom. There we go. And we will cut our stub punches in it. Distressing ink on it. Not there. Remember, there's tape right there. Actually looks pretty good. It definitely is strong. Okay. Now you can cover this little one fourth inch here if you like. Just cut your piece a little smaller than your quarter inch and apply your piece in there. I'm going to apply mine later because I want to keep going on on where we're headed with this. Let me throw away these extra magnetic pieces that we didn't need with our magnet. And some of our score tape pieces. Get those out of the way. Get that out of the way. Better cover my blade before I hurt myself. That is a dead end on tape. Put the tape back there. Sometimes you just kind of have to clean up just a slight little bit before you move on. Okay. Now, your belly band. Let's go ahead and apply that. Now, um, you need to mark a center point on these and that center point is going to be at one and three quarter inches. So measure in one and three quarters of an inch. One and let's see one and three quarters right about there. Put that mark on both ends. One and three quarters. And that's your approximate center point here. And you're going to apply this. We're going to glue it down. 
we're going to make sure our hinge continues to work, but we're going to get it as close to that hinge edge as possible on both ends. Now when we cut this band, oh, I guess I should tell you, I'm sorry. We cut it at three and a half inches by eight and fifteen sixteenths. That made it slightly shorter than this page. Then you score at a half inch on each end. And that will give you your belly band made, belly band. Then you put in your center points on the inside here so you can line it up. That's going to give you the center point of your page. Put the glitter glue on one end. But don't do the other end yet. First line this one up. moved. <laughs> oh my gosh, Angela. There we go. Go to the other end, apply our glitter glue or tape, whatever you'd like, or regular glue if you like. make our piece that goes underneath here, but before we do that, I'm going to run my ruler under there to try and burnish that glue down. On both ends. Insert some glue here. And I guess right here too. My glitter glue seems to maybe not be working properly. But I think what we'll have to do is apply some stress to it. Get on the other side of that page. I don't want to crush anything from the other side. There we go. Give it a little bit of stress treatment. And I think we'll do that on the other end. Oh, I'm grabbing some some big clips here. And I think we are going to have to let that dry. Because my glue does not seem to be working too hotly. I'm going to undo the other page. Because I want to get inside here. And apply that clip. Oh, 
Now, let's go over here. So if yours is also pulling away from the edge, we really want that belly band um, down solidly because we are going to use it as a waterfall. Go. Let's let that set. So I think maybe while that sets up, um, oh, the other thing you can do. I wondered if I wrote on one of these for you. You will need to cut nine of these at three and a half inches, three and a half inches wide. I think it was four inches, three and a half inches by four inches, three and a half wide, four inches long. Yes. Then score each one at a half inch. So you will end up with three and a half inch squares. And these are going to make our belly band. So let's have a look at this and see what it's doing. I think we'll go ahead and work on it. I mean, oh, we can't. Can we? We can actually work on it because we'll put our piece on underneath. Oh, no, we can't because we need that piece right there. Da dee da dee da dee da dee da. Da dee da dee da dee da dee da. Oh, dear. Well, I think we'll let this dry overnight and we'll come back in the morning to you. It will still be this same video, but we'll come back in the morning and we'll, um, since it's supposed to be raining tomorrow, I won't have to work in the yard. I used to love to work in the yard. Now I like to be in my art room all the time. Anyway, since that really does need to set up well, um, we will let it do that. We will come back in the morning and we will apply. Wow, look at that. The glue came off right there too. I don't think my art glitter glue is working too well. That's a little upsetting. Look at that. Well, I'm going to apply a thing right there as well. And we'll have to just see what it does. That one glued good. Okay. So, oh, home. It's like watching paint dry, isn't it? I was kind of hoping we could finish tonight. But we can't because we're going to let it dry. Tell me I have to let it dry. Say it a little louder. I can't hear you. Okay, thank you. Let's let the glue dry. And I will see you in the morning. Okay? Thank you for joining me. And I'll be back soon. Right away for you. It'll be tomorrow for me. All right. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Hello. I'm back and I am to the part of the video where I've lost my um, video sound and have to do a voiceover. 
never done this before, so please forgive me. Um, I lost all this stuff when I, my computer died and lost its memory, and it took several programs with it of this Stamperia Blues album, and it also took the voice of a couple others. So, here we go. We're going to try this. I don't know how it will be. Uh, you'll have to forgive me for any slip-ups and boo-boos I make. So, what I'm telling you here is that I have um, centered my album and or centered my belly band on the album. And on that belly band, we're going to put a um, waterfall set of pictures there. Um, I don't know what I'm telling you there, honestly, because it was so long ago that I made this, clear back in September. But um, I'm just mostly talking about keeping things centered and that this new um, hinged uh, closure that I put on it, you can see here that I used a purse closure. And it was a little wide, so I put in there some of the burlap lace and to take up that space. And what I did here was just did a simple, uh, I folded the ends in and then ran a long stitch through it and pulled it up into just a little um, kind of a wavy lace effect. And then I attached it underneath. And that worked out. I felt like it worked out really well. And it took up that space that was sitting there that I really did not like at all. So um, I'm trying to give you a close-up view of it, but it's focusing on the um, magnet closure there. And I didn't really like how that looked on the back. So we are going to put some additional lace there to cover it and to make it um, visually more effective. Here I'm deciding whether or not I want to put in the full band or just add the lace. So I am probably discussing it with you, because I would do that. Oh, okay, so what I'm doing here is removing the lace, the lace from the, the burlap ribbon. That way we'll have matching lace on both sides of the um, closure ruffle. So you can see here I've made the ruffle and we are um, going to uh, bunch it up and then we'll run uh, long needles. So let's move on to our uh, belly band waterfall. Our belly band measured three and a half inches by eight and fifteen sixteenths. And we scored it to fit the center of the page. We're going to apply on mine, I applied nine waterfall sections, which I cut at three and a half by four inches. And I scored the top, the four and a half inches down, at a, I scored them a, a half an inch. So they measure about three and a half by three and a half. Now you can choose to make longer waterfall pieces and use less, or you can even choose to make wider ones. You would just have to cut them to fit your band so that you don't have an extra hinge hanging over the sides. 
you know, be creative and decide how you would like to do them. Now you're going to want to be sure that your scores are nice and even so that your square is not off by even just a little sixteenth of an inch. If they are, the whole waterfall will be crooked. So go ahead and erase all your pencil lines so none of those show anywhere by accident. And then I cut my waterfall sections and scored each one so that I would be ready for this part. We're going to apply glitter glue to each one of the hinges. The glitter glue, remember, dries quickly. So don't set it down and walk away and then come back because it will be uh, tacky when you get back, but it won't have good stickability when you do that. You'd have to re-glue it. Now I'm lining this up at the top and on the sides at the base of that square. You want to be sure your belly band is going to come over it correctly, your closure. And press it into place. And then burnish it down. And I'm checking here to be sure that it is indeed squared up. And removing any glue or glue flex that have landed on the paper. You can see that waterfall is going to butt right up against the last one. And as long as those scores are nice and even, doing that should give you good placement of your waterfall. So let's go ahead and place this second one. carefully squaring it up, top and base and sides. Give it a good press down. Remove any extra glue. And check your fit before you burnish. And it's looking good. I'm removing the extra glue flex with a little moist towelette. It really is better to let the towelettes dry out first. It um, doesn't get your paper wet that way. <clears throat> One thing I did on these waterfalls was on that half inch hinge that is glued down there, I went back and used a washi tape that just fit in there nice and neatly and that covered that up. Remember you can't cover that three and a half by three and a half plus that extra half an inch with paper, the same paper, because these are on a hinge and your paper wouldn't open correctly, your, your waterfall would not open correctly. So go ahead and finish placing all your waterfall sections and then I will get back to you and we will talk about how it went. Okay, so we've got, we have applied all of our waterfall pieces. We've checked and they're all nice and lined up. Now let's be sure our belly band can truly close. And yes it can because we added that extra space in it when we made the hinge system. I've decided that I do like the first closure hinge. Although it's a little thick, I do like how well it holds on to that waterfall 
and also lets us create a belly band with it. I will go ahead and apply the lace to the back of the ruffle there by the hinge. And I will continue by putting uh, designer paper on the waterfall. Now, for me, I'm only going to place the picture, the designer paper on the top waterfall piece that's showing. And then each piece down, I will put a section so that it creates a very nice visual effect of the whole piece of paper. So here I'm just thinking about what I want to put on that belly band. I think in the end, I end up deciding that the ruffle is enough. So you can go ahead and decide how you would like to decorate yours and decide how you want, what designer papers you want to put on your waterfalls. Um, the reason I didn't fully put designer paper fully on each square was because I did not want it to get too fat for the album since I've already fattened the album up quite a bit. So anyway, go ahead and decide how you want to decorate it and I'll see you back here for doing the album cover and spine and back. I'll see you. Bye bye for now. Thank you for watching my videos and subscribe and I'll see you back here soon. Bye bye.